Okay. Is that pretty visible for everyone? Yes. Yes. Great. Um, so why am I here and why am I talking about WordPress? Um, so I've been working on Knative for a while. And one of the fun things about Knative is um, that it and Kubernetes both are designed to run lots of different software. And that includes running software that maybe wasn't designed with Kubernetes in mind. Um, and WordPress is a great example of that. You know, there's lots of places you can go and you can pay like five bucks a month or something like that to get your WordPress site hosted. Um, so this is clearly um, more about learning than it is about um, being the strictly most cost-effective option. But um, I wanted to be able to get some experience actually, you know, using Knative, maybe it wasn't exactly the way it was intended, but with some real software that was big enough that I couldn't just like change the shape of it and make it, you know, do the things I wanted. Um, and, you know, I wanted a place to have a blog. And so I figured that's kind of an excuse. Um, so learning by doing, I feel like is really important because um, it's really easy to convince yourself that you know what's going on. And then later on, it turns out that that's not really true. So, um, <laughs> um, I wanted to be able to run real software. So that includes stuff like upgrades. Um, and I learned a lot of stuff about Kubernetes upgrades, um, including scary etcd surgery when you screw up um, your quorum and you have two nodes down that you re reinstalled um, and you're trying to figure out how do I get quorum um, for, et for etcd when it expects three nodes and I have only one. Um, Knative has not been the painful part here, which is great, um, but it's given me more empathy for people running Kubernetes on their own. Um, and I wanted it to not be too expensive. So you'll actually see the hardware set up at the end. Um, I did a blog about it because I had a blog <laughs> and I needed some content. Um, so Kubernetes documentation actually has, you know, how to run WordPress and MySQL. Um, and you can see it's under stateful applications. And um, they show you how to set up um, MySQL and then how to, how to set up WordPress. And you'll notice again, they're using a persistent volume claim. Um, they are using a deployment, um, but I think they are mounting it in a read write once mode. So their deployment can only scale to one. Um, so that's a thing you could do, but I feel like we should be able to do better. This is a web app. Um, why does it need a stateful set? Um, so it turns out they're they're adding a volume mount for var www html, um, which WordPress will use to install plugins and stuff like that. Okay, what can we do here? Um, so if we actually go in and look at this Docker image, um, the nice thing is there is this Docker file template that does some stuff, but at the end, um, basically it says your entry point is Docker entry point. And then they've got a bunch of different varieties of image. Um, but uh, here is where they all do their setup. And so you can kind of get in here and see what it does. And basically they're packaging some stuff and they're copying it into um, the target directory, which is PWD. And if you go back and sort of dig that out, that's that var www.html does some other stuff and then it starts Apache. So it's basically, here's a container, let's stuff some stuff in it and, you know, let's put some stuff in there and start it. Um, if it's already there, um, then don't do it again. Um, so, whoa, that's a pretty simple Docker file. Um, and I just downloaded and unzipped the Nanospace theme, which is the one I'm using. And, uh, Download it, installed it, and um, here's where we'll show the final product. Um, and so this is actually cold starting over there. Um, it's actually in my basement, um, running off my DSL line. 
and here we go it's up and running and if you wanted to see um the cable management is a little neater now um but it's basically three of these dell um thin clients um with about eight gigs of memory on each one <laughs> and uh yeah and so the, this was my first attempt you know build that docker file stick it in a knative service um put in a couple secrets and um point it to my sql from an operator yeah it is ha you i've actually unplugged one of these and everything keeps working so that's kind of cool So my first attempt, um, it's all working. That's awesome. And then I go to write a post and it takes me like five minutes and it scales down. And then I'm logged out, which is weird. Because when I come back, it's asking me to log in again. Um, so digging around a little bit, um, each run generates a unique, unique auth key and um, some other variables that are used to set various cookies. And so I create a secret for that. And um, I go in and I set WordPress secure auth key and logged in key and nonce key. Um, it's pretty boring to do that, but copy paste and you know, you're off to the races. Um, and this is actually more recent. So this, will, this is hinting a little bit of other stuff I needed to do. Um, Great. So now I'm not getting logged out anymore. Um, and I try putting together that first post and I upload this image and um, I go to post it and then I go and check in five minutes and the image is gone, which doesn't seem right. Um, so yeah, it looks like WordPress stores images on local disk too. Um, and since we want to be able to scale out WordPress, um, that's probably not great. So um, yeah, what can we do? Uh, it turns out other people have had this problem. They've tried to run WordPress um, in a somewhat more automated fashion. And there's a couple of different S3 plugins, um, but this one is, it says it's lightweight. It seemed pretty easy to install and didn't have any licensing requirements. Um, and so that felt like what I was looking for since I was looking for do this on a budget and kind of hack things together. Uh, so that's awesome. Um, and at this point, I realized that downloading this and unpacking it and everything else is probably not the awesome thing I wanted to do. Um, and so I go and make a two-stage Docker file. And you can see that I'm downloading these um, with curl and unzip. And so I need an image with curl and unzip. And I didn't really feel like I needed those in WordPress. So um, here we go. I pull out Ubuntu and get this stuff, um, unpack it all into export themes and export um, plugins and stuff like that. Um, and there is a little bit of customization that needs to be added to this S3 endpoint. Because remember, I'm doing this on the cheap. And so I don't really want to be paying an S3 bill every month and having stuff go in and out of my house. So I'm actually using a Ceph object gateway. Um, and so my next, oh, um, that says my SQL from operator, but it shouldn't. Uh, this is, so the way this works now is when you go in and you, um, here we go. This is correctly. Oh, look, it scaled down to zero again. Oh, helps if. Um, so this is the dashboard side of things. And here on media, I can upload a bunch of stuff. And um, you can see that there's this URL here. 
And if we go over here, So we've got revisions, uh, we've got replica sets, we've got deployments, we've got services. Um, huh. Get all doesn't actually get all. Okay. Well, we will load up Octant and go over to the WordPress. Uh, HTTP proxies. So here in the site, um, skip over all of that. Um, so for stuff to content uploads, um, I rewrite it and send it to the S3 service. And for everything else, um, I rewrite things and um, send it to the, to a K native, the K native external service. Um, and I set the host name to the, that of the K native service. So, um, I could be using domain mapping for this, but since I want some pieces of the URL to go to one service and some pieces to go somewhere else, um, I use the contour HTTP proxy. And so this is working my media uploads work. Um, if I want to add a new one, let's see. Now I need to see if I can actually find an image. Let's see. Okay. And so there's a cropped image of my head, um, which I used for testing. And so, yeah, that's all working. <laughs> uh, except that the cold start sometimes takes a really long time. just WordPress. Because now that I've got a Kubernetes cluster, I can run all sorts of stuff in it. Um, so you can see I have a MySQL, DB, MySQL and I have, um, <laughs> and I have a, uh, you know, and I have one instance of this, but I can also um, actually, Okay, I have no idea what's going on there. Let's go back to Cube Control. So here are my revisions. And so I can actually take you back to before um, I fix this. And let's see, edit. Okay, so instead of saying traffic is latest revision, let's say revision press. I think this one should do it. Okay. Um, oh, it's called provision name. Let's 
So now, um, if we open up the blog, it's going to take a little bit longer and a little bit longer and a little bit longer. And eventually you'll get upstream request timeout, which is on voice speak for it took more than the 15 seconds I expected. Um, and eventually it will start up and it will work. Um, Ta da. And then everything is quick and so forth again. So, you know, going and loading this post, you know, everything works quick as long as the container sticks around. And then as soon as the container goes away, um, we're back to slow cold star city. Yeah, I, I could increase that 15 seconds, but 15 seconds is kind of a really long time to wait. Um, and so, yeah, I go to load this again and spin, spin, spin. So it's great that you can just take one of these things and ship it in here. And then you're like, oh, why is cold start so bad? Um, and it turns out if we actually go in and look at that entry point, every time it's starting up, it's discovering, oh, wait, I need to do this. Let me tar up everything in these file paths and copy it over to a new directory. What if instead we did that once and we built it into the Docker image? Um, oops. And so if we go and look at my actual latest Docker file, um, well, let's look at me. Here we go. You can see at the end, I run the entry point with the command line true, which does that copy once, and then you don't have to copy it every single time. And so um, if we go if we go back and switch um, back to WordPress 15. Um, I'll just say latest revision true. And then we will close that. And now we can see that rather than upstream, upstream request timeout and it taking about 20 seconds or so to start, um, it's still an annoyingly long cold start. Um, and I am looking forward to um, all the magic that Jules wants to do to make this stuff faster. Um, there's probably some stuff in building the image that could be could make it faster too. Um, but it actually loads within the timeout. Um, and so the last thing was, you know, I said, hey, I'm going to live with this and do upgrades. Um, and so um, if we go to the, the WordPress dashboard, um, Right now, um, everything is actually up to date, but um, WordPress will actually notify you, hey, you need to uh, reinstall, you know, <laughs> it offers to reinstall this, you know, WordPress version. Um, but remember, if someone stops looking at the blog for five minutes, we're gonna delete all of the pods. And so that reinstall is not really gonna stick. Um, but instead, in here, we've actually got everything versioned. So I just need to build a new image. Um, you can see that right now I'm st sticking with WordPress 5.7 and we'll pick up the minor versions there. If the Nanospace theme or the S3 uploads theme has a newer version, I need to go in there manually. Um, but the nice thing is I've got Git tracking all of this. So there's no like, oh, what happened? How do I go back? Um, and uh, yeah, and it scales on requests. So if someone wants to load test my blog, um, it should work just fine. And actually that makes me think of one more thing I should probably do. Um, I've got container concurrency set to 100. Let's set that to 10. 
so that um, if someone wants to load test it, we really get more pod spinning up. Um, and so in a few minutes, we'll have that working. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's basically it. Um, if anyone's got questions or wants to, you know, you know, wants to ask, how'd you do this or that? Um, looks like it's up and running. So let's see. Two, three, four, five. Yeah, about five seconds. And and the old one's shutting down. Um, and I don't know. Um, I actually really like looking at this stuff um, in the UI. So if anyone does want to throw a load test at it, um, I've got gigabit, so you can probably squash, um, squash these Dells first. <laughs> um, but let's see, workloads. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> if anyone's got Hey or Siege or something like that installed, um, the site is off by one dot dev um, with HTTPS. And so, yeah, um, cert manager, cert managers managing that. Um, and yeah. Um, oh, and if you're curious, um, I've actually made my home Kate's config repo public. I'm in the process of migrating everything um, to GitOps using um, Flux CD, but this stuff isn't there yet. Um, oh, and I guess the one other fun little hack um, is. Um, this is actually something that I built for Knative, um, but this is a really cheap and cheerful log aggregator. So we can actually go in um, and look at the WordPress logs. Um, I complain about this a little on my blog because these are all JSON logs. And so I get lots of really cool information here and they are super hard to read. Um, so I guess this one is about successfully creating the logger, which isn't too interesting. Um, Q container is starting um, somewhere in here. So this is a log from user container. And WordPress not found copying now. This would be the one that where um, Actually, I'm not sure why it says that because it looks like it's running WordPress 15 here, which is the one that was fixed. Um, so yeah, probably my next um, fun project is going to be a log viewer for those because I don't really want to run a whole ELK stack. Oh, nice. Someone got the load up. Um, cool. So yeah, um, that's all open for questions. How did you do this? You know, whatever. While folks are thinking about their questions, um, I will be launching a poll uh, if everyone could provide also some feedback. It's really helpful with these meetups. And Evan, I'm wondering if you saw, I think there was a question in the chat. Oh, uh, yes. From Carlos. Uh, the question was, how easy is it to set up um, Ceph as an S3 server? Um, so I'm actually using Rook to manage Ceph. Um, and uh, let me see. And I've got some custom resources. And so I've got a Ceph cluster 
resource that um, has a bunch of stuff in it. Um, and this is actually checked in so you can see it. Um, but uh, so you need to create one of these and set the values appropriately, which is kind of annoying. Um, and then you just create a Ceph object store. Um, and and most of this stuff is defaulted. So all the stuff I really needed was the gateway and the port um, and um, yeah, I think that was it. And let's see. And Ceph is actually one of the things I have under here. So yeah, you can see this is the object store. Um, I said replication, I'm using erasure coding. Um, it's pretty easy. The one difficult part um, that's actually, I don't remember if it's working or not right now, is doing SSL between contour and the um, Ceph object gateway. Um, yeah, there is TLS within the cluster. Um, I'm, uh, the question was the logging thing. So the basic logging thing is pretty much, um, if you go to Canada, uh, actually, I'm going to use the new one. So this is the new site that um, that um, folks have been working on um, that Omar was talking about earlier. And in the administration guide, there's a section on logging. Um, and this is basically the setup that I've got with a collector and a shared volume with Nginx. Um, if you want to actually see what I'm doing, um, it's under metrics. Um, I have a fluent bit set up. Um, the one extra thing is that the um, collector, I also have um, a little log rotate container running. Um, because otherwise I run out of space. I put like, you know, it's a 40 gig volume or something like that. And so um, log rotate is how I'm getting those extra things. And um, it doesn't actually work great with Nginx because the dot log, it recognizes the suffix, but all the other ones, it's like, ah, it's binary and you download it. Um, although viewing it in the web browser is painful enough that downloading it isn't that much worse. Uh, cert manager, um, the cert manager is actually for external SSL. Um, internally, I think it's just a self-signed cert. Um, and there was one thing I needed to change just a little bit. So you'll see there's this S3 endpoint. Um, and you need to override the um, endpoint parameter to get it to point away from S3 and get it to point to your own um, AWS host, which is in this case, Ceph. And that Ceph is actually not exposed to the outside world except through that um, HTTP proxy. So um, I could probably show you the password and stuff for that, but I'm not going to just because. And then if people, actually it's easier to read the intent from this YAML. So um, yeah, uh, WordPress. Oh, this is copying in a little bit of extra stuff. I forgot I did that. Um, and, but here's AWS host an AWS port um, from a config map. Um, 
and oh, this is the one other piece that I forgot earlier um, for Carlos that you need is an object bucket claim um, to say how big your S3 bucket is. And I set it to five gigs for now because I can't really imagine uploading more than five gigs of images, but I'm sure when I do, I will figure that out. And I always pick these numbers low enough that I mean, I'm going to have to figure it out at some point, but it's going to be a while for five gigs. Um, yeah, so um, <laughs> uh, so this is not all scaled to zero, just to be real clear. Um, Let's see if we go back to um, WordPress and we look at the pods. Um, okay, I'm guessing that someone. <laughs> Let's see. I don't think you actually broke it, um, but you did manage to get 45 pods running. Um, it looks like things got pending. Um, and uh, um, I'm not sure that I'd recommend WordPress because you'll see there is this MySQL database in addition to the um, 45 pods that tried to spin up to handle Dave's load test. I'm actually curious how that turned out. Um, so you'd still need a place to run this MySQL database. Um, I don't remember what resources it needs. I'm kind of wondering. Uh, yeah, the. It looks like the API server is really not happy at this point. Um, I'm gonna have to go in and debug later. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we want to move from a static static site generator to WordPress, though. Um, I I picked WordPress mostly um, to prove that it could work, and not to um, not as a recommended. Yeah, I should probably set. Uh, max pods and um, probably also change con container concurrency back up from 10. Um, well, if necessary, I can always uh, cut things at the router and then uh, fix it. Um, that's awesome. Uh, See if that works. <laughs> yes, and definitely sign up for more demos. Um, I am out. 